an order of service for noonday. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalm is Psalm 25, verses 15 through 20. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and bring me out of my distress. Consider my afflictions and my trouble and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes and with what violent hatred they hate me. O oh, guard my life and deliver me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the twelfth chapter of John. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, for it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the commemoration of Constance, a nun and her companions, commonly called the Martyrs of Memphis, 1878. In August of 1878, yellow fever invaded the city of Memphis for the third time in 10 years. By the month's end, the disease had become epidemic and a quarantine was ordered. While 30,000 citizens had fled in terror, 20,000 more remained to face the pestilence. As cases multiplied, death tolls averaged 200 daily. When the worst was over, 90% of the population had contracted the fever. More than 5,000 people had died. In that time of panic and flight, many brave men and women, both lay and cleric, remained at their posts of duty or came as volunteers to assist despite the terrible risk. Notable among these heroes were Constance, superior of the work of the Sisters of St. Mary in Memphis, and her companions. The sisters had come to Memphis in 1873 at Bishop Quintard's request to found a girls' school adjacent to St. Mary's Cathedral. When the 1878 epidemic began, George C. Harris, the cathedral dean, and Sister Constance immediately organized relief work among the stricken. Helping were six of Constance's fellow sisters of St. Mary. Sister Claire from St. Margaret's House, Boston, the Reverend Charles C. Parsons, Rector of Grace and St. Lazarus Church, Memphis, and the Reverend Louis S. Schuyler, Assistant at Holy Innocence, Hoboken. The cathedral group also included three physicians, two of whom were ordained Episcopal priests, the sisters, two matrons, and several volunteer nurses from New York. They have ever since been known as the martyrs of Memphis, as have those of other communions who ministered in Christ's name during this time of desolation. 
The cathedral buildings were located in the most infected region of Memphis. Here amid sweltering heat and scenes of indescribable horror, these men and women of God gave relief to the sick, comfort to the dying, and homes to the many orphaned children. Only two of the workers escaped the fever. Among those who died were Constance, Thecla, Ruth, and Francis, the Reverend Charles Parsons, and the Reverend Louis Schuyler. The six martyred sisters and priests are buried at Elmwood Cemetery. And the monument marking the joint grave of Father Parsons and Schuyler bears the inscription, Greater love hath no man. The beautiful high altar in St. Mary's Cathedral, Memphis, is a memorial to the four sisters. And so we commemorate the martyrs of Memphis. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, O God of compassion, for the heroic witness of Constance and her companions, who, in a time of plague and pestilence, were steadfast in their care for the sick and dying, and loved not their own lives even unto death. Inspire us a like love and commitment to those in need. Following the example of our Savior Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. God of power and love, look kindly on the tasks we have begun, and at this midweek hour, renew your grace within us. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence set our hearts on fire with love for you, and bring all our work to fulfillment in accord with your will for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.